Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Cobb Cow Cast. Today I'm going to be talking about Mihara. Mihara is from the second book, Knitting Outside the Box, Drape and Fold. Um, and it's one of my favorite pieces in the book because it's real weird. Um, Mihara is one of those pieces where I just wanted to see what would happen. So I'm going to walk you through the construction today because believe it or not, this is what Mihara looks like when you start it out. It starts as a long strip and by folding and twisting and turning and pleating and all of that sort of fun stuff, you end up with this kind of beautiful, overlapping, interesting cocoon shape that we've got going. So let's take a look. All right, so for every pattern in knitting outside the box, drape and fold, what I've done is I've included kind of a schematic at the beginning of how things are actually put together. And I used something called the Yoshizawa Randlet system, which is, um, I know that sounds super nerdy, but that's typically how origami diagrams are notated. So all of the things that you'll find in here mimic um, how you would see um, diagrams shown in a traditional origami pattern. So that kind of really helps us understand what's going on there. So Mihara starts up here and you start by casting on and knitting this very, very long strip. And again, this guy here was my original to kind of test out this concept and make sure it worked. From there, you knit up and down from either long side and then we go through this long series of twisting, folding, to basically turn it into one big Mobius strip. And what that does is that creates armholes and a body hole. So let's walk through doing that. Take it away. Okay, so here we go. We've got our diagrams, we've got our swatch. Let's do this. Okay, so the first step is we're gonna fold this end under like that. Okay, so we're going to fold on that line and fold under and that's going to get us that shape right there. Step one. Step two, we're going to fold this under. So this is going to tuck under like that and we'll rotate so you can see right there and I can smooth it out a little bit change the angle a little bit, no big deal. Okay, next one is I'm gonna fold this up that way. We're gonna rotate everything so you can see what we're doing. Final bit on this fold is I'm gonna take this end and tuck it under so that I can take thread and needle let me get my arm out of the way so you can see it. I'm just going to use my tapestry needle here to kind of tack it together so you can see what that looks like. So what that's done, so you can kind of wiggle it into place here. Make sure everything's folded right. But take a look at that. That, these are two little armholes and this is a body hole. We've done that with just one long piece of fabric seamed up the center. So let's do that one more time so you can really see how cool this is. Not to toot my own horn or anything because, you know, let's be humble here. But it's really cool that we can do this with knitting, that we can take pieces of fabric and just turn them and twist them and create such unexpected shapes from such simple, simple, <laughs> simple starting places. Okay, so again, first step. Here we're gonna tuck that under. Okay, so that's gonna look like that. We're gonna tuck this end under and rotate so we match the diagram. So now we're looking at something like that. Okay, we're gonna fold that. rotate so we look like this and then I'm going to tuck that end under and then using my tapestry needle I'm going to seam
seam those two pieces together. When I do that, and kind of zhuzh it back into place, technical term, we've got our little shrug. How cool is that? You can also do it. I like giving you that very extended um, instruction because it can be a little tricky to visualize otherwise, but you can do it by introducing, make sure we do this right, a full twist. So I'm going from this being the right side to the wrong side, back to the right side, and then seaming it together. This will do the exact same thing, but then you have to do a little bit of like, okay, so that goes there. Where's that twist go? Okay, there's that side. There's that. There's that. We flip that in that way. Okay, so one of the reasons, as weird as this looks, it's because you can't really tell someone in a pattern. You know, just flip it around till it looks right because <laughs> that gets you some angry emails. So that's why we go with this. But what you're doing in essence with all of these twists and folds is again, you are just introducing one full twist into your fabric. And that creates that figure eight shape within it. Let's see. Takes me a minute every time to get this right. There we go, just like that. So cool. That's a little bit of behind the scenes on the nerdery of Mihara. Um, this was a really fun one for me because I tend to be a bit of a control freak <laughs> with my knitting. Um, that's probably come across a little bit so far. But what this did is that I didn't necessarily know how the proportions were going to work out. Like I started and, and I measured it on myself and I said, okay, this is how long it needs to be. And I'm relatively proportional, thankfully. So that's helpful for me as a designer, but I said, okay, how does that then cascade to other sizes? All that sort of good stuff. But it also meant that I got to do some designing on the needles. So the sleeve on this, for example, let's pull this out. So when you're doing the sleeve and the um, kind of finishing edge for the neckband, what you're doing is you pick up into those spaces that we've created with that crisscross. So this armhole becomes this armhole here. And this armhole becomes this armhole. And this open edge across the front all the way down and around here and down and around here becomes this edge. So what that means is that we pick up a little along there and suddenly we have a sleeve. Like suddenly we have a sleeve opening. Once you get that connection in place and kind of cement these two layers together, you have a sleeve. And we continued, we continued, I continued, um, although huge, huge shout out thanks to my sample knitters and test knitters on these patterns because without you, literally nothing would be possible. Um, so continued that lace pattern through the sleeve and if you can see we start decreasing within the lace pattern and that's how the shaping for the sleeve happens. That was something that I just got to kind of figure it out as I went along. As a designer you come in with these ideas of like okay I know how a raglan works, okay I know how a circular yoke works. I didn't know how this was going to work so it was a really cool experiment for me um, to just play and to try things. So. That's how we knit Mihara up in uh, socks, yeah, from Koopnitz, and that's this one here. You can see really beautiful heathery gray. And then in Eponymous from Three Fates yarn, which is just absolutely beautiful hand dye here. Pretty much any fingering weight will work. Um, and if you wanted to mess with it and go with a TK weight or a worsted or even a bulky, go for it. Just go for the proportions. Um, look at how big the rectangle needs to be. Figure out what your gauge is. Go from there. So that's how Mihara works. Um, I'm obsessed with this shape. I'm gonna come back to this and play with this again. Um, and I can't wait to see what you do with yours. All right, have a great rest of your week. Bye guys.